good morning welcome to day 22 of vlogmas so it's thursday today only three days till christmas so getting very close now my children are definitely getting very excited first of all i wanted to say sorry i wasn't on yesterday for day 21 i was hoping to but then life just got in the way yesterday there are a few things that came up so um i thought right don't stress, so just um, park day 21, you can go on tomorrow, catch up with two days of elf and ticks and um, yeah, carry on as usual. So yeah, sorry about yesterday, but I'm back on today. So I'll start off with elf's and ticks. So I've got two days of what elf has been up to to share because although I had a break yesterday, elf didn't. So yesterday, I'm just, it's funny, I was just about to talk about it and suddenly I've forgotten what he did, so I'm going to have to think. I remember now, <laughs> um, yesterday morning, we woke up to find that elf had bought a present, which he never usually does, so my children were quite excited by that. So I'll pop up the picture to see, so you can see how he, and we found him, he had got out the children's duplo, which they love to play with. Um, they always have a good game with the duplo. I guess it's great for imaginary play. They love building different things and then sort of, yeah, playing with the duplo characters. So Elf obviously knew this and had bought them a new Christmassy duplo set, um, which is really cute actually. It had a little gingerbread house. I guess it was the duplo equivalent of the Lego gingerbread house we've been building. And it had a little Father Christmas and a Santa sack and all sorts of cute little pieces. I've got a couple of them down here actually. I'll grab them so I can show you them because we've built them now. But yeah, Alfred obviously um, set up a little construction site to bring the present in because it was quite big for him. So you can see he got it all, he used some string, got it all tied up to bring it into the house um, and share it with them. So yeah, they were very happy with that. But yeah, I'll go and get the little duplo set now so you can see it. So one second. <laughs> So I'm back now, I've just found the little Duplo house. Here it is, isn't it sweet? It's got a little present on the roof, um, little door at the front, some little candy canes. And um, it also came with a couple of figures like Father Christmas and a couple of children presents. And also this really cute little plate for Father Christmas with some Christmas goodies on and a little teapot so we could have a cup of tea. So that was a nice um, surprise elf for a present because as I said, he doesn't usually do that. So. Yeah, that was a bit diff different start today and it was their first day of the um, Christmas holidays so it was a quite a nice day for them to have a bit of relax and have a good old play with that. And then this morning, Elf was obviously back again. This time we found him, um, oh, let's put this down. Um, this time we found him, he having found my son's basketball hoop. We have a little indoor basketball hoop for my son. We often hang over a door and some soft balls, he plays with it with it. And Elf got in a bit of a tangle so I'll put up the picture so you can see. Um, Elf would obviously really enjoy playing with a basketball hoop. He'd found all sorts of balls to have a go with. Some more appropriate than others. There was an apple and an orange in there, that, which I wasn't quite sure was a great idea. Lots of bouncy balls. Yeah, whole mix. Um, but it looked like Elf had been having fun, but then got tangled a little bit in the net. So I'll pop a picture up so you can see. There he is, a little bit tangled. He's still got his balls, so he's hanging on. Um, my son helped him get down from there um, and then tried a few of the different balls out with the net. Thankfully, not the um, orange or the apple. But uh, yes, that was where Elf was this morning. And then in terms of what I'm wearing today, I've got on a hand-knitted jumper and a handmade skirt. And I'll talk about the jumper first. This is my most recent knitting project that I finished for myself, I think last month or the month before. And I really enjoyed this knit actually, and I made it using this pattern here, which is the pink Cosmos sweater pattern by We Are Knitters, which I bought as part of a kit. So you get the pattern and the yarn, and they also usually include in the kit a little label, which I don't generally use. I've just got a bit of a store of them here and also a needle to help sew it up. I mean, yeah, it's a really nice kit, actually. It's in this lacy stitch. Um, I'll show you the sleeve because you can probably see a bit better there, all the detail on the pattern. It's really, really pretty. As you can see, there's a bit of volume to the sleeve, and then it comes into sort of more of a kind of snug cuff. And the actual jumper itself is designed not to be too tight-fitting, I think, so it's quite a nice shape to it. I'll stand a bit so you can see. I've just got it tucked into my skirt today. But yeah, it's a really nice knit, this one. It's knitted up in their cotton yarn, which is really lovely and soft and comfy to wear. And I guess it's nice and breathable too. And I think they describe it as like a summer weight yarn. So you could wear this jumper quite easily in the summer. I wouldn't maybe overheat it. I've obviously got it on in the winter. I've layered it up um, over a black t-shirt. And then if I go outside, I'll pop a coat on because I think if the wind blew with all the lacy holes, I'll probably get a bit chilly. But it'll be nice and cosy um, under a... Um, yeah, big coat. So yeah, it works well for this time of year too, I think. And the cotton yarn is really nice to knit with actually. It's quite distinct yarn. It really holds its sort of shape. So it's not sort of fuzzy like a wool yarn, which I found really nice because it meant I could really see the lace stitches when I was knitting them. 
Um, and also because it's quite a dark colour that make, can make it trickier I think sometimes when you're knitting but the fact that yarn's quite nice and easy and stays nice and sort of doesn't go fuzzy or anything makes it easier to see the lace stitches still even in a dark colour like this one. So I really enjoyed knitting this one up and um, it's knitted up using a chart and I haven't done many garments using it, knitted many garments using a chart but I'm really enjoying that kind of the process actually now, once you get used to the different symbols I think you can really find a rhythm from it and it's nice to see a pretty stitch like this one sort of starting to come together. And I made the size medium for this sweater. I think my measurements have put me as a size small, but like I've mentioned before, I find I knit a bit more tightly than the wee knitter's tension, so I generally size up one size to get kind of the size it's designed to be, and that worked out quite well on this pattern. And I didn't need to make any adjustments to the length of the sleeve, which I often do. Actually, the length's really good on this one. Um, and the only adjustment I made is for the top kind of neck band and the bottom band, I changed them from garter stitch, like the pattern specifies, to a rib stitch, because I thought that was more of a kind of classic jumper stitch, so I thought I'd prefer the look of that but it's a really nice one to wear this one actually um yeah and I've enjoyed wearing it tucked into my skirt um and I've actually making another version of this jumper right now I haven't got very far with it I might mentioned it I think earlier in vlogmas and I'm making this one in a creamy color I've got it here to show you as you can see really I haven't got very far so this is the color I'm using for my second version this lovely sort of creamy color and here is the main sort of back or front piece starting to come together so I've done the rib and the pattern's just starting to show now so yeah, I haven't got very far on that because I've been busy on other knitting projects. But I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this one after Christmas, maybe watching a few sort of films over the New Year period and yeah, getting really stuck into enjoying that one because it's a really enjoyable knit. So that's why I'm wearing on my top. And then I paired it with one of my favourite skirt patterns, which is this one here. Um, the S3 skirt pattern by So Liberated. I love this skirt pattern. It's so comfy to um, wear. It's a nice sew. Um, and I've got a few different versions in different fabrics. But yeah, it's a kind of um, a skirt with a flat fronted waistband and elasticated back and it's quite full and swishy. It's got a button placket down the front which you can make as a faux placket because the elastic at the back of the waistband means you can get into it just by pulling the skirt on and off. And you can add patch pockets. There's also an inseam pocket pattern piece too, which I mostly use, I think, because I find it a bit more practical than the patch pockets. And particularly since I've made a few versions of this skirt in viscose, where I find patch pockets often just look a bit droopy and aren't that useful because if you put something in, it will just weigh the skirt down too much anyway. And it's got a really good size range to the S3 skirt. It goes from a US size 0 up to a size 30, which takes you up to a waist of 48 and a half inches and hips of 57 inches. But the nice thing about this pattern, I think, is the... Waist, I kind of go on the waist measurement because there's plenty of room in the hips because it's kind of quite a full gathered skirt. But actually the waist measurement isn't too critical because because you add the elastic in at quite a late stage to kind of figure out the sizing, you can kind of bring in a little bit more or a little bit less um, depending on the length of elastic you use anyway. So it's quite an easy one to fit at quite a late stage. And the version I'm wearing today um, is one of my favourite versions. It's a mini skirt version. I generally make the estuary skirt in a mini skirt version. It isn't actually designed to come in that length. I think it's designed to come in an above the knee length or a midi length or a full length but I'm not such a fan of that length skirt always on me so I generally make the shorter length and then it's quite swishy and I quite like it like that and the version I'm wearing today is a slight hack because I didn't add the button placket um, I cut um, the front piece just on the fold instead um, to, to create like quite a simple skirt actually so it's basically a simple skirt with a front and back piece and then gathering at the back in a flat front and I'll stand up a bit so you can see my version I made it in this really, really cute um, cotton e-cat fabric I got a long time ago from Etokri. I've only made one order from Etokri, but when I did make it, because they shipped the fabric all the way from India, um, I wanted to make sure I bought a good amount that would, yeah, make a few different garments so I didn't have to order again anytime soon for that shipping. So yeah, one of the things I made was this cute skirt, and it's this sort of black um, base fabric with these large spots on and I love ecat fabric it's one of my favorite fabrics to sew with because it's quite nice and stable but also to wear because it's so lovely and soft I guess it's like a washed cotton type feel so yeah a really comfy style of fabric to wear the only thing I have found with ecat fabrics is sometimes they can be a little bit fray um so I often do French seams on them just to make sure that they'll last as long as possible I think I did French seams on this one even though it's a cotton it's quite lightweight so the, the seams don't end up too bulky if you French seam I find but it's a really nice comfy one to wear. I think the print is quite cute. I'll put a picture up so you can see it's on. I've gone for the inseam pockets. And yeah, I thought it looked quite a cute outfit really with the knitted um, black sweater and the little sort of skirt. And I'm quite enjoying wearing that today. Oh, and while I'm still on the subject of what I'm wearing, I thought I'd also briefly mention the size range 
on the pink Cosmos sweater pattern because I'm conscious I generally try and remember to include details of the size range on sewing patterns um, but I often forget on knitting patterns and I know that information can be quite useful so yeah in terms of the pink Cosmos sweater pattern the pattern is available in four size categories small medium large and extra large and each sort of size category covers a bit of a range of sizes rather than being designed for one specific measurement. So I make the medium, which is designed for a bust of 35 to 38 inches, which is larger than me. I'm sort of right at the bottom end of the small category. But like I said before, because of tension, I size up. And then the largest size available on pink Cosmos sweater is extra large, which is designed for a bust of 41 to 45 inches. So it's not the biggest ever size range on the pink Cosmos sweater, which is a shame because it's a lovely pattern. But I thought it'd be worth sharing that just so you know. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. And then I also wanted to share with you guys a couple of updates on other projects that I've been working on that I've been wanting to share over the last day or so, but obviously I couldn't with me not being on yesterday. And the first one is I've made some progress on my Mile End sweatshirt, which I'm currently making. Um, so if you watched my previous Vlogmas episode, you'll know that I'm making a new version of this pattern, the Mile End Sweatshirt by Closet Core Patterns, which is a pattern I've really, I really love and I've made a couple of versions of before. So I'm making another one of this version here, View A. I really love it. It's kind of a classic sweatshirt, a bit oversized, drop shoulder, really comfy to wear. And I'm making a new version in a fabric that I've been eyeing up for a while and wanting for a while. It is a fleeced back sweatshirt fabric by Mind the Maker, which I got from Minerva and I got matching ribbing too. And I made Mylen sweatshirts in this fabric before and I really love them. And I find it a really cosy, comfy fabric for this time of year. And I've been eyeing up the creamy colourway. I think it's called Creamy White. And this is the colour of it here. So it's not the most practical colour ever, but I think it's quite Christmassy actually. It makes me think of kind of snow and that sort of thing. So it'll be nice to get this one finished to be able to wear over the festive period. So I've got a bit of sewing done and you can see it's starting to take shape and look a bit like a sweatshirt now. I've just been working on the main body here. So this is the front and you can see it's got these kind of nice style lines coming in the side and in the back here. So basically what I've done is I've sewed the shoulder seams and I did one extra step that isn't included in the pattern when I sewed the shoulder seam. Before I sewed them together, I added in some stabilising tape or I used actually just some plain white ribbon just on the back pattern piece. And I just zigzagged that on just to kind of keep the shoulders nice and stable because um, I want this sweatshirt to last and not sort of stretch out of shape with washing and wearing. So I sewed the shoulder seams, sewed the shoulder seams, that's a bit of a tongue twister, um, after I'd added that stabilising tape or ribbon that I used. And then I also top stitched them down because I think that's quite a nice detail you can do on this pattern. I've also got the yoke in place here at the back and I've top stitched that as well. And I used a stitch length of three um, millimetres for top stitching. I started off at 2.5 and it just looked a little bit too small. So I increased it to three and I think that's quite a nice stitch length for kind of quite a chunky knit fabric. And I've also got the um, neckband in, but I haven't actually stitched it down. And um, I got to the point... Um, the evening before last where I needed to then change the needle to a twin needle and I thought at that point actually I'm going to stop now and do that another day so that is my next step to get the twin needle in and just top stitch that neck band down but it's coming on nicely so far and then the next step will be to do the darts on the arms the, the um, sleeves have these darts added in oh, you probably, can you see them pattern oh yeah they can see them there that's at the front um, which is quite cool so that's the next step after this and that's quite a fun step to start doing those because it's a nice feature so yeah, it's nice to make a bit of progress in this one. So I'd really like to be able to finish it before Christmas so I can share the final sweatshirt with you guys and you can see how it looks on. So yeah, fingers crossed on that one. But I really enjoy sewing it. It's nice to revisit this pattern because it's a nice fun sew. So yeah, I was pleased to make a bit of progress on that one. And the other thing I wanted to share with you is some progress my son and I have made on our Lego gingerbread house. So I'm going to go and grab that and I'll share with you how that is shaping up too. So I've got the gingerbread house here now on my lap. I'm treating it very carefully now because we've gone quite a long way with it. So I don't want to trip um, and sort of break it all or anything like that. But we've really enjoyed working on this together, me and my son. Um, my daughter's helped a little bit. My husband's helped a little bit. But it's been mainly me and my son. And um, it's just such a cute, fun little project. And all the little details are so lovely. And we, yeah, we're really enjoying how it's looking now. So here is our little Lego gingerbread house we've been working on. So we've made a bit of progress, I think, since I shared it last. We've got the whole chimney built up here and there's a little snowball set on top and if you press that the fireplace lights up which is so sweet and you can see it on this side and also if I turn it around carefully and press again uh, you can see it light up inside too and yeah it's got some snowy roofs on now with little sweeties on which is really cute and lots of little candy canes there's a little outdoor seating area where daddy gingerbread man's sitting I love these little candy canes outside the front door too 
And then if you turn it around to the back, we've got on now the top floor is starting to take shape. This little bath and little toilet there. I love these little sort of cute little sort of stained glass style windows too. So yeah, we're on the fifth bag. There are four kind of main bags to work through. I'm on the fifth one now. So just a little bit more to finish up on top, but there are quite a few pieces still to go. So it's another project we're hoping to get done before Christmas. And we're just taking it slowly and enjoying, yeah, doing a little bit here and there. But yeah, I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, it's shaping up really nicely, I think. So that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. And then in terms of our plans for today, well, this morning we're to go out on a family bike ride. My daughter is learning to ride and she's gradually gaining confidence. So we thought today for the first time we'd all get on our bikes. We won't go very far, just a little too tall around the block, which should be a bit of fun. I'll try and take a little bit of footage if I can. I'm not sure how I'll be able to on my bike or not. I'll give it a go and hopefully pop a bit of footage of that. And then I'll see you again a little bit later. So I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. afternoon now we had a really nice bike ride out this morning i hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the video of it it was actually really quiet out and about i think because it had rained just before so it ended up being quite good timing because there weren't many people or dogs or anything out on the path so that was quite nice not too many obstacles or anything that would intimidate my daughter because yeah she's still building up her confidence on the cycling and we did a really nice route we did the little path that i showed you in the video and then we also ventured onto quite a quiet road um near us to kind of bring our way back to our house and it was my daughter's first time going on a road and she handled it really well actually and i think she actually really enjoyed it so it was a real boost to her confidence on the cycling front so yeah it was a successful bike ride so that was nice so we got back home, had a bit of lunch, and now it's after lunch. Everyone's having a bit of a flop. And I think we've got a bit of a relaxed plan for this afternoon. We're going to hang at home, get a few things a few things sorted for Christmas, which would be good because it's really getting so close now. And then a bit later this afternoon, we're heading out to meet some friends, which will be nice too. So I'm not sure I'll get much sewing or knitting done today. I'm hoping maybe I'll be able to do a few lines of knitting on the sofa once we get back this evening, but... We shall see, but I'll finish off this video here now because I won't have a chance to edit it later because we're going out. So thank you so much for joining me for another day of Vlogmas. It's really nice to be back on today. It's all being well. I'll be back on again tomorrow for day 23. Can't believe there are only two days left after this until Christmas. It's come around so fast. Um, and I'm going to miss doing Vlogmas actually once it's finished because I really enjoyed popping on every day. I missed popping on yesterday actually. So thank you very much for joining me for another day i hope you have a really lovely day too and i'll see you again um for tomorrow day 23 so yeah see you tomorrow bye <laughs>